Bill O'Brien ruined the Houston Texans. The front office of the Houston Texans had nothing to do with Bill O'Brien. I feel sorry for them because Bill O'Brien for years and years as a general manager was trying to be cute, was trying to play franchise mode and, and just do all these ridiculous trades and free agent acquisitions and a trading away draft picks. And now they find themselves in this ridiculous hole that they can't get out. We like to be positive on the show. We like to show optimism. So we're going to show you what is the best case scenario for the Houston Texans. How do you get out of this hole of not having draft picks in the first two rounds of being $8.5 million over the cap, what's projected to be 17 million by the time free agency hits. What can you do? What transactions and moves do you need to make in order to be in the best scenario possible? So we thought we'd go on this website called spottrack.com. And uh, by the way, spottrack.com is where I go for all of my f- contract signings to get information on that. So whether it be players, and I want to see how many years they have left on their contract, how much money they're owned in, in years to come, uh, salary caps for teams and franchises as well, spottrack.com. We're not sponsored by them, by the way. N- nowhere near sponsored. We're just bringing them up because they're, they're just so amazing. And so we wanted this website. Number one, we wanted to dive into the Houston Texans and uh, – you know, get a headache because this whole scenario is just ridiculous. How do you get out of this uh, hole that you're in? And number two, we went on this uh, uh, page and this website. And what's cool about this website, let me actually pull it up, is uh, you could see uh, different contracts. Uh, hold on, let me pull it up right now. Okay, cool. So let's pull it up. You could see different contracts uh, and, and numbers and manage your own kind of roster. So for instance, if I wanted to release Laramie Tunsil, I can press that red X where it says release, and then the cap space on the side, the negative 8.5 million, it'll adjust that, whether it be add more money or subtract money if they're due uh, some money or if there's some dead money for that year. But I just went ahead and played around with this, and I came up with some uh, trades that a lot of different uh, teams could make for some Houston Texans players that'll free up some salary cap space for the Houston Texans so they can finally be in a good spot with the other NFL teams around the league. Listen, I know that the Jets and the Eagles, if you're fans of those teams, are in some tough spots as far as their roster goes, as far as the front office goes. But listen, it's nothing compared to the Houston Texans, so I apologize if you're a Houston Texans fan. So let me first start off and look at this and see which players do you need to release or trade away uh, on this Houston Texans roster. So a lot of people, if we look at the salary cap here for 2021, are due a lot of money. You got Laramie Tunsil, J.J. Watt, Deshaun Watson, Brandon Cooks. Uh, listen, all these guys are staple players. Okay, Laramie Tunsil, I don't feel like that the Houston Texans should move on from him. One of the best offensive linemen and tackles in the NFL. You give him up, you're giving up way too much. J.J. Watt, another story. Okay, So there's a lot of players on this roster that are due a lot of money. Let's start off and let's go ahead and just play around with this and see what we can do to try to help this Houston Texans roster. So first, we've got to get rid of J.J. Watt. It's expected that J.J. Watt wants out of the Houston Texans franchise, wants nothing to do with it. He's not a fan of the front office and the moves that they made recently. Okay, cool. You want to move on? Fine, we got it. We're going to free up $17.5 million. So watch this. I'm going to go ahead and hit release because we have the trade option as well. But at 32 years old in that contract, it's hard to believe that J.J. Watt wants to be traded anywhere else. So he would ask for his release more than likely and would probably sign with a team like Pittsburgh so he could play with his brother. So we're going to hit this red X, release. And then once we hit that, you see on the side, now we're in the positive and cap space, 89 million dollars in cap space that we can spend on uh, pending draft picks if we were to get any uh, first round or second round draft picks. Uh, Free agents as well that we want to re-sign on our team. So J.J. Watt, he's cut, he's gone. That's probably going to have to be the first move that the Texans are going to have to make. Now you got to think about it. You got to think about other players that are expensive, given that the amount of uh, production that they're putting out versus the amount of money that they're making, who do you need to get rid of? Well, if we want to talk about cuts, we could also trade this player, but we could also cut Duke Johnson, the running back for the Texans, second string. You already have David Johnson to a $9 million contract. That's a lot of money. I understand, but he's your running back one. He was productive last year. You want to at least keep a solid run game on that team. So keep David Johnson for now. Duke Johnson, on the other hand, yes, he's great, but you can move on with him. He's making $5 million. You can 
trade him or release him, it doesn't matter because it's not going to go against the cap either way. So if you choose to, let's just say, for instance, uh, they want to trade away uh, Duke Johnson. So we pull up the trade uh, uh, menu, and uh, I don't know. What's a team that needs a running back? Is there a team that I... I pfft. Oof, man. Okay, well, let's just choose a random team. Uh, let's just go ahead and say the... Uh, Miami Dolphins could use a running back. They're probably not going to trade for Duke Johnson, but let's just go ahead and say that. You trade for a draft pick, whether it be a third round or fourth round or fifth round, or just given the value of Duke Johnson, you process that trade and you see that Duke Johnson is gone from our roster. And you see on the side, $13.9 million in cap space remaining. Okay, we're on. We're off to a good start. You got rid of J.J. Watt. You got rid of uh, Duke Johnson. You have a lot of money that you can work with. Let's get a little bit more because we need to re-sign some key free agents like Will Fuller on this roster. So looking at this team, some players that we can see so far, if you look at the rank on the side, they're ranked uh, one through whatever based off of uh, how much money they're making. Randall Cobb, number six, is making a lot of money, but his production at 31 years old, do you expect him to really do much for this team? Uh, you could get rid of Randall Cobb. So for instance, if we hit the release button right here, but that's going to go against your cap because of dead money and things like of that nature. So uh, because of his contract, it's actually going to bring us down about one or $2 million. So instead, let's just go ahead and redo that. Let's keep Randall Cobb for now. And same scenario if you were to trade him away as well. Who else on this team can we get rid of? Listen, it's going to suck for Houston Texans and that offense, given that you just gave away Duke Johnson you're going to have to give away with another wide receiver that's expensive. And since Randall Cobb costs money against you, it's going to have to be Brandon Cooks. You're going to have to give him away. Brandon Cooks has been passed around way more than a blunt. He really has. He's been to team after team after team every single season. But the Texans, you're just going to have to move on with the expensive contract that he has. He's 28 years old. You could release him, yeah. But you could also try to get some draft picks out of, out of him like you did prior to the trade deadline in the 2020 season. So you could trade him. Let's say, for instance, we want to trade Brandon Cooks and to a team that would be uh, just for fun. Let's say that the, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, the Philadelphia Eagles could really use a wide receiver. Let's go ahead and trade Brandon Cooks to the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's process that trade. Processed it. Now look on the side. Look at the cap space. $25.9 million. This is what the Houston Texans can do. This is very realistic and, and, and realistic transa transactions that the Texans could make to move on from these expensive players to look ahead and rebuild for the future. Now you're at $25.9 million. You know what you can do with that money? You can re-sign Will Fuller. He's probably going to expect a contract of $15 million or more every single year. But because of the suspension that he had, you can deduct that maybe down to twelve or thirteen million dollars a year. Very affordable. There's one key transaction that we have left. What do we do with Deshaun Watson? He wants out of the Houston Texas franchise. Do you want to pull the trigger and trade for him now so you can get the most out of him prior to the NFL draft? Or do you want to wait and see if he's actually going to play because you want to hang on to him? You want him to play. But is it going to hold out and just sit out until he's traded? That's a key scenario and a key decision that the Houston Texans front office has to make. But let's say that before the NFL draft, they want those first round picks, those second round picks. Uh, you traded away Brandon Cooks for, let's say, a second or third rounder. You could trade Deshaun Watson for another draft pick as well. You trade away Deshaun Watson, okay? You trade him to the New York Jets because you could trade him, listen, to the Carolina Panthers. For Teddy Bridgewater. But Teddy Bridgewater has an expensive contract as well. If you're looking to get a quarterback in return for Deshaun Watson, the New York Jets for Sam Darnold would be the best option just because Sam Darnold is still playing on his rookie contract, only going to be making $4.7 million. So let's go ahead and choose the New York Jets right here. Trade Deshaun Watson to the New York Jets, and we can choose a player as well. Let's choose Sam Darnold, $4.7 million. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. So we're process that trade. Uh, 4.7 million. And then look at the cap space on the side. Went down a staggering $10 million. And that's because of the money that uh, Deshaun Watson is owed 
For the future, it's going to be the best decision just because you get rid of that big contract. But for now, you're going to have to eat something if you want to trade away Deshaun Watson and get Sam Darnold's contract on top of that as well. So you're at $50 million. Now that leaves us in a tough scenario. You trade away Deshaun Watson. You could resign Will Fuller to maybe $12, $13 million, but that only, only leaves you $2 million or so to sign your draft picks, to sign any sort of free agents that you want. That's not the wisest decision. Let's just go ahead and recap uh, all the transactions that I made. You cut J.J. Watt, you save $17.5 million. You cut Duke Johnson, you save $5 million. Trade Brandon Cooks, you save $12 million, and you get a draft pick. You could push for a second round pick, but more than likely, just because of the age that he's at, it's probably going to be a third rounder or below. But you get a draft pick out of that, which is great. Now, in that case, you got to think about, do you want $25 million to use to sign Will Fuller and other free agents, but you're going to have to keep Deshaun Watson and then take the risk of him uh, not playing and have a holdout and you don't get a first round pick in this year's NFL draft as well? Or do you trade away Deshaun Watson get that first round pick, get a superstar cornerstone player in the NFL draft, but you don't have enough money to re-sign Will Fuller on top of that and your receiving core is at that point going to be led by Randall Cobb and Kiki QT with the amount of money that you have. Tough scenario, tough situation for the Houston Texans, but leave your comments down below. What do you think is going to happen? And if any of these transactions make any sort of sense, let us know. And if not, what are some other transactions that you would make if you were the Houston Texans organization?